Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Let's kick off with the continuing fallout from Theresa May's election manifesto and, in particular, her plans for changing the way in which elderly people pay for care in their old age. The Conservative manifesto, published last Thursday, promised that the state will pay these costs once an individual's assets dip below £100,000. But the policy came under fire from political opponents, who have variously described the plan as a death tax and a dementia tax because old people who need care wouldn't have their overall costs capped. Well, in the last half an hour, Theresa May has been speaking in North Wales, where she announced her social care plans would now include consulting on a lifetime cap on how much individuals would pay for their own care. So I want to make a further point clear. This manifesto says that we will come forward with a consultation paper, a government green paper, and that consultation will include an absolute limit on the amount people have to pay for their care costs. So let me reiterate. We are proposing the right funding model for social care. We will make sure nobody has to sell their family home to pay for care. We will make sure there's an absolute limit on what people need to pay. And you will never have to go below £100,000 of your savings, so you will always have something to pass on to your family. Theresa May. Theresa, she's folded. It took 24 hours for her to perform a miraculous U-turn on one of her key policies on how social care will be funded in the future. The Prime Minister's obviously listened to the concerns people raised and I think the introduction of, um, of a cap is, is a welcome clarification of this set of proposals. We do need to reform the way social care is delivered and funded. The greatest threat to our ability to safeguard people in their old age is actually um, a weak economy, and that's what we would get if we elected Jeremy Corbyn as Prime Minister but and you, him in charge of Brexit negotiations. You called it a clarification. It wasn't a clarification. It's a complete about turn. There was no mention in the manifesto just days ago of there being a cap on the costs that you could pay if you had assets over £100,000. There was just a flaw. Was that the wrong policy? Well, this, this is a significant announcement that the Prime Minister sure. has just made this afternoon. Was this it the wrong policy? Change. Was it the wrong policy in the manifesto? I think it's, it's improved with the clarification that um, a cap will be consulted on. I think that was an important element of previous debates over social care. So I welcome the announcement today and I believe that there'll be many people out there who will also welcome it. Right, although it was very clear it was a break with previous stated government policy that did say there should be a cap and she went against that. So why has she changed her mind? Because she's listened to the concerns expressed about how the policy was set out in the manifesto and she's made a significant change which I think many people will welcome. Right, because it was called and hailed a dementia tax, which is true, isn't mm. it? It was a roll of the dice. Mm. If you were unfortunate enough to get dementia in old age, then if you had assets over £100,000, you could see all of it potentially go. If you didn't get dementia in your old age, or you've got another sort of illness that could be treated in the NHS, then even if you had valuable assets, you wouldn't have to pay a thing. I don't think it's fair to have characterised these proposals as a dementia tax. The reality is people already pay for their social care if they've got... It doesn't include their house. It doesn't include their house, though, in the calculation, does it? And but that would I have done. As I say, everything depends on a strong economy and only Theresa May and the Conservatives can deliver a strong economy and a successful Brexit. If we jeopardise that, we won't be able to care properly for our frail elderly population. I mean, Chukramuni, it wasn't that long ago, was it, that Gordon Brown suggested a very similar policy, which was dubbed a death tax, you may say now very unfairly, mm. by mm. the Conservatives at the time, with a maximum of £20,000 being paid after a person died to pay for the social care that they might have used while they were alive. So, so what was the problem? Well, the problem with this is that there was no cap as uh, under the original plans. We haven't been told what the cap is, but I'm sorry, this idea that somehow the Conservatives and people who sat in Conservative Cabinet 
since 2010 have been good for social care. Teresa, what you guys have done to social care in my area is absolutely criminal. What because is it? Because what has happened, what has happened is they have heavily, heavily cut the budgets of local authorities, which has meant, in turn, they haven't been able to provide the social care that we need. That has then had a knock-on effect on the NHS because it's meant more older people going to A&E and when they go into hospital, less likely to be coming out because there's nowhere for them to go afterwards. That is the reality of what you have done since 2010 and ultimately the only way we're going to be able to resolve this, first of all, you have decent integrated care for our elderly people which looks after their mental, physical and social needs together and we all have to make a contribution. But the idea that you dump the entire burden of sorting out your social care with the families concerned, with that rest true. of society playing a role. But that is what your proposal originally was going to do. Well, let, and I don't think any more well, let Theresa, kind of let, strong and stable let government. Let this Theresa is let Theresa answer, let Theresa answer that, because that was the reality, wasn't it? That actually it was an inheritance tax. In fact, UKIP, I think, dubbed it um, a conservative death tax. It was an inheritance tax on anything over £100,000. Look, as I said, the reality is that people already contribute towards the cost of their social care. That that isn't changing as a result of the proposals in the Conservative manifesto. But there wasn't a cap. One of the reasons, one of the key reasons for pressure on social care is we are an ageing society. So Theresa May is determined to take the tough decisions to put social You've care funding on a sustainable basis. People, Theresa. And the, You've taken away the what funding. What is crucial to doing that is a strong economy, which we will not get if Jeremy Corbyn is our Prime Minister and in charge of our Brexit negotiations. All right. You must be one of the MPs who voted for a no-confidence motion in Jeremy Corbyn. He is not the right person. But Theresa Bates, we are talking about the social care sure. policy. It's just social, social care. care. Let me tell you something. I will always have far more confidence in my Labour Party than your Tory party. All right, well, then on that, on that, Chuka, I mean, what is the cap that Labour would put in? Because it's not clear from your manifesto. Mm. It is absolutely true that Theresa May has said now, she's changed her mind, that there will be a lifetime cap on costs. But what's the cap in the Labour manifesto? Well, there is no cap in the Labour manifesto right. because we would do this differently and we've already been clear that we'll put more money in social care. Now, hang on a second, but How let's look at the policy. No, because it's not different. If you look at the social care policy in the Labour manifesto, you would also have a floor yeah. and you would have a cap. Yeah, so, I in that sense, I it is the same. I don't know what the cap is, but right. the difference is, would we yank away the funding from local authorities which provide social care for people. And how much and money will you put not... back into social well, we, local well, authorities? Well, we have a, I, mean, I mean, one thing I will agree with Theresa on is that we have a different economic policy and we wouldn't basically massacre public services. And so that way, I mean, I just look in uh, Lambeth where I've been representing, it will mean our local authority will have decent funding to provide the care that elderly people in my community need. That will be ripped away under the Conservatives. And we actually see a role for society, the family, all of us sure. playing our part and right. not having the entire burden sitting with the family. Well, now, except, if hang on. For, for an exact cap, I don't know. No, 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 I know you don't know an exact cap, and that's fine. You've said that, and we now know that Theresa May hasn't said uh, mm. what the cap will be. But it does say in the Labour manifesto, we will seek consensus on a cross-party basis yes. about how social care should yes. be funded, with options including wealth taxes, yes. an employer care contribution, yes. or a new social care levy. So yes. you are looking at the same options that Theresa May has now clarified, to use your words. Well, I mean, we don't quite know what she's proposing. No, no, All but we know what, is that what would you prefer out on the Labour manifesto? Well, a wealth at, tax, an employer well, care we're contribution? Looking, we're looking at a range of options. I actually quite like the proposals that were put forward by Andrew Dilnod, who did try to come up with a cross-party solution on this. And, and, and I'd say one thing, actually, Joe, you're being totally fair in asking me this question, in the sense of, ultimately, one government won't be able to make a decision about the future of social care. It's going to be a multiple government thing, which is why we do need to build a consensus on it. All right, let's go back to the issue of leadership which Chuka Amuna raised. And the point is, Theresa, there's nothing strong or stable about the leadership that Theresa May has shown when it's come to this social care policy. Because it looked as if it was hurting the Tory party's election prospects, she's had to change the policy and you turn. I, I wouldn't characterise it like that at all. I think she is definitely the right person to be Prime Minister, to be running our economy, to be leading our Brexit negotiations. Well, if she was so strong, we why has she had to change the policy? Why has she felt the need? Because she has listened to the concerns people have expressed over the weekend. I think it's right that she does that. Um, a Prime Minister is entitled to listen to concerns expressed by, Will about you a policy. For all but the, stress and worry the reality is people have people. a choice. On the 9th of June, 
do they want Jeremy Corbyn standing on the steps of Downing Street or Theresa May? 11 days after that, we'll start our Brexit negotiations. All right. Do they want Jeremy Corbyn? I know Corbyn you want to talk about Brexit. I know you May? want to talk about Brexit, but this is a big policy change that has been announced today. Um, let's see how Theresa May's social care plan is playing with voters, because Adam has taken the Daily Politics mood box to Birmingham. Adam, what was the mood box question? Hi Joe, greetings from a slightly breezy Birmingham where there's also a bit of a building boom, so if you hear any digging or drilling, I do apologise for that. Yes, the mood box question we asked before the Prime Minister did her speech today was about which party leader do you trust to sort out this whole issue of adult social care? Is it Theresa May or is it Jeremy Corbyn? Worth remembering Jeremy Corbyn's policy proposal is to have an extra eight billion on social care by the end of the next parliament and in the longer term to set up this national care service which would need an extra three billion pounds a year. Here is what Brummies had to say about this issue. Do you care about the issue of care for the elderly? Yeah, yeah. you do. But you're you wouldn't need it for about another sixty years. Yeah, my grandparents will. So yeah. yeah. Which party leader do you trust to look after care for older people? Jeremy Corbyn. Why is that? Because, like the Labour manifesto, it's laid out well, it's costed well, and it's done in a way that reflects, like, nicely on most of society and gives older people and young people both a chance. And, like, the Tories that have their weird kind of death tax thing that's just not have you great. been sent here by Labour HQ? What do you think about their plans for this whole... Have you heard about the £100,000 and including your house and the means that's test for if you get care? Yeah, I have heard about it, but at the end of the day, we've got a purse within which we have to live in and uh, we have to cut the cake accordingly. There's not endless amounts of money. And yes, it's going to disadvantage some people, but ultimately, I think we have to, as a society, uh, get the best bang for the book. Which party leader do you trust to look after your grandparents and great-grandparents? That's a good question. Um, None of them particularly. It's care for old people. It's the massive story at the moment. Some people are calling it the dementia tax. Have you heard about that? Yes. What well, do I don't think they're gonna. I don't think anybody did that. That's that's below the belt. He wouldn't happen. I don't think that would happen at all, really. Too many vote losers for that. For too, far too many. I've got friends that work in adult social care, and my mum works with care as well. And we've tried to get care for in our family and it hasn't really worked out because of all the cuts that we've had. Do you think this is going to affect the outcome of the election? Uh, I think uh, I think well, you can see there's a swing towards the Labour but I don't think it will be big enough to um, to beat the Conservatives. Is this your first Vox Pop? She doesn't look very impressed. <laughs> look at that face. Ooh, get away from me. When it really comes down to it, I think a lot of people uh, have a sort of altruistic view, except when they have to put their hand in the pocket. Who do you trust to sort out care for the elderly? Corbyn. Yeah, why is that? Because I don't trust a Conservative. Probably Corbyn. Okay, why is that? Uh, because I think he's a more genuine guy. This whole issue about like care for older people, does it, has it affected your family or anyone? It has done in the, yeah, it has done in the past, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, what did you think probably. of the system that was in place? Oh, a mess. Do you think it'll ever get fixed, the system? It'll ever stop being a mess? Not that in my lifetime, I don't think. Well, it's totally unscientific, but it looks as if a big majority of people think Jeremy Corbyn is the person who can sort out care for older people. Thank you very much, Birmingham. And thank you, Adam. Of course, it's unscientific, but just taking a look at that anecdotally, um, Theresa Villiers, Corbyn on the side of the elderly and the Tories and Theresa May not. Was it just too complacent to bring out a proposal like the social care one that was half-baked? Well, the, the motivation behind the proposal is to put social care on a sustainable financial basis. But, you know, the, the reality is the polls have tightened. This is a real contest. Um, it's, it's not easy to predict the outcome of the election. So was it too so, complacent? Should she not have put out a policy that was going to be controversial at the very least, if brave, at best? Well, I think what people should draw from this is that a protest vote for Labour or the Lib Dems, you know, involves a real risk that Jeremy Corbyn will be our Prime Minister. Did it help that, the, that, that your party didn't come clean also about which pensioners would be affected by means testing the winter fuel allowance? I don't think that is, um, you know, that, that is obviously an issue that we will need to address as part of a, 
a consultation on how to implement these proposals. If we're re-elected, that consultation will look at the level at which arrangements on the winter fuel I'm payments are amended. Why you're causing people to you just say this so casually. Up to seven, well, more than seven thousand older people in the constituency I've been representing since 2010. There's about 72 percent of older people could be affected by what you're talking about. You just casually talk about these things as if somehow, oh well, we're concerned. But why what should wealthy done? pensioners, why should wealthy pensioners, well, all wealthy pensioners get those sorts of allowances? But hang on, when you look at, for well, no, example, answer that, answer I'm, answer, that I'm, answering, I'm, I'm answering the question. If you look at what Labour had been proposing at the last general election, for example, yes, more wealthy pensioners were going to be affected by this, but you're talking about 72% of old age pensioners who receive the winter fuel allowance. Well, hang on. They haven't actually, they haven't actually we put haven't a limit. Set the right, but yeah. Theresa, what should it be set at? Because until you do put uh, a limit or say where the means test is going to fall, a bit like the social care policy, people will think it's going to affect them. We will, in due course, if we're re-elected, obviously set out a threshold on, on this. Should it, it, is, should it have been it done is in a the manifesto? Decision. You know, it, it's, it's not a decision that was taken easily. But the reality is that we need, in an era when resources are, are limited by the deficit we're still dealing with that we inherited in 2010, we need to make sure that we spend taxpayers' money Are you really blaming well Labour for something that happened in 2010? We, we left government seven years ago, and your government has borrowed more in seven years than the last Labour government did in 13. So I want to take no lectures from you. Except you were, proposing, you were proposing now. exactly the same sort of uh, bringing down of the deficit as has actually happened under the Conservatives well, and the Coalition really Government. We'd have achieved our target. Well, we won't know, of course. Um, Vicky Young is... Uh, where the Prime Minister was giving her speech. Vicky, how has that gone down? The big change, the U-turn on the social care policy, not just a floor of £100,000 in care costs, but now there is going to be a cap. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty incredible stuff, isn't it? Just four days after the launch of the Conservative manifesto, here it is, Theresa May urging us today to look at page 65. She says there is no change. Well, that's not uh, the way I see it. If you look in here, yes, you can see in this document, uh, they talk about the fact your house will be taken into account. They talk about uh, deferred payments. They talk about the fact that you'll be able to keep £100,000 ultimately no mention, though, of a cap. And that is such a fundamental part of this kind of policy. It's not like work hasn't been done on this. There have been numerous reports into social care and the way that you could fund it in a different way. Caps have been talked about. Don't forget, David Cameron was due to bring in a cap of £72,000 in 2020. No mention of that in this document. So instead, Theresa May today insisting nothing has changed, that the principles stay the same, that she's going to tackle the issue of social care, because everyone does agree that more money needs to go into the system. And instead, she's accused Jeremy Corbyn and Labour of spreading fake claims uh, and fear and scaremongering over people losing their homes. But of course, it's uh, everyone is free to read this document. Everyone will look at that and see that there was no mention there of a cap. And the fact that uh, yesterday, Damien Green, her pension secretary, actually saying there'd be no rowing back from these proposals, um, that they had been decided. Um, was the fact that she hadn't really consulted many of her ministers a problem in terms of putting out what her critics have called a half-baked policy that ended up looking like a dementia tax? Yeah, I mean, that is the criticism from some in the party, that she has very close advisers, uh, that she relies on them too heavily, something, rather than uh, talking to some of the cabinet ministers uh, around her. And Damien Green not just saying uh, that there would be no rowing back, he actually criticised uh, the idea of a cap. Now, what she is saying, although I have to say she sounded uh, very rattled, she sounded under pressure, uh, she doesn't usually. And, of course, she's made uh, such a big deal in this campaign about being strong and stable. Clearly, any kind of youth or significant change like this, you know, is going to be absolutely seized upon by her opponents. She will say it's all about taking tough decisions and she will say that she has been willing to tackle an issue uh, that many others haven't been willing to do. Vicky Young, thank you very much. Well, I'm now joined from Westminster by two top-notch political journalists. Are there any other kind? Laura Hughes, political correspondent for The Telegraph and Jim Waterson, political editor for BuzzFeed UK. Jim, what do you make of this U-turn?
Well, we've been looking for a good bit of campaign drama for a while, and we finally, four days after the Tory manifesto launch, had a screeching U-turn from Theresa May. I don't think she expected this, but talking to Tory MPs, they were all saying on the doorstep, time and time again, this was actually coming up. And they were a little bit rattled. The texts I've been getting from uh, people in, in marginal seats where, you know, we're confident we're going to destroy Jeremy Corbyn, we're going to take seats we've never taken before. And suddenly they were dealing with pensioners who were really concerned about stuff like this. And I think the key issue is, People didn't necessarily know what the policy was. They just didn't like what they'd heard about it. They didn't know the detail. They just didn't like the idea that at any level someone was going to get a hold of their house and that wasn't going to be their kids. Right. And uh, presumably, Laura, it was because they made a link between tightening of the polls over the weekend and the announcement of this policy on Thursday. Yes, it wasn't a good weekend for the Tories. Everyone's been boasting almost about how well they're doing. But this week we saw over the weekend, actually, they've only got a nine point lead. That's the first time it's been a single number since Theresa May announced the snap poll. So I reckon they actually got pretty nervous. We were always expecting a bit of a wobble at some point, but actually I think a lot of candidates were feeling like Theresa May was being a bit cocky. They knew they were doing so well, so they kind of just thought, let's just go for it, let's go out there. And actually, all the polls of the weekend, specifically on this dementia tax, have shown that that's unpopular and Labour are actually doing better. They've actually got the key message out there. They've used the phrase dementia tax and it has been incredibly damaging. Jim, if we look at other issues, Jeremy Corbyn, the Labour leader, came under fire over the weekend for his associations with the IRA and he refused to condemn IRA bombing without equating it to other parties. Does his position on security and defence negatively impact on the retail offers Labour is making in this election? Uh, well, I think there are problems with it, and certainly in the sort of seats where they're, where they're sort of fighting with the Tories, particularly in the Midlands and the North. Um, I think one of the interesting things with the IRA and Jeremy Corbyn is uh, the way that the connection has sort of developed. So if you're under 40, perhaps you associate uh, IRA and things like that more with the Good Friday Agreement and the peace process, and so it's less of a toxic association. Whereas for a lot of older voters, the sort of people that the Conservatives need to get on side, that's where it really hits home. So it's interesting seeing, depending on the generational gap, it's playing slightly differently with different audiences. Laura, what about Labour's university tuition fees policy? How popular is that? I reckon it will be very popular. Labour are clearly targeting the younger generations. We know that that's where Mr Corbyn's supporters mainly are from. They're saying they're going to scrap them entirely and that from this year, September, they will be scrapped so that students don't defer it. It's going to be popular with young people and we know that young people are who Jeremy mm. Corbyn is targeting. But do they vote? That's a very good well, question. Well, there's a reason that they've announced it today, which is the final yeah. day to get people to exactly. register to vote. And normally the problem with making an offer on tuition fees is that the people who are going to benefit are the next generation along. This time you can actually say to current students, mm. right, vote Labour, get your education for free. Right, because of course it's happening this year. Just finally, um, Jim, I mean, this was supposed to be the Brexit election. Mm as Theresa May had billed it and she returned to that theme today, no doubt to distract from the change on her social care policy. But she was the one who decided to make it about public services to a large extent. I mean, is Theresa May's decision broadly parking her tanks on Labour's lawn backfiring? Well, look, Labour's gaining the polls. The thing is, the Tories still have a massive lead. The, there are a lot of issues around in the final weeks of the campaign. Polls tend to swing back towards the government, tend, tend to swing back towards the Conservatives in most places. So the problem is, I think it's hard to argue that Jeremy Corbyn's not had a surprisingly good campaign in the eyes of a lot of people, um, but he's still got a long way to make up. So. Uh, she, Theresa may be much happier if this was more about Jeremy Corbyn, who is fit to lead the country, and about Brexit than things like social care, and that's what we're trying to see today. Thank you to both of you. Enjoy the sunshine. Now Theresa May calls it a clarification. Opposition parties call it a U-turn. Either way, the Conservatives have spent the day defending their decision to include a cap on the amount anyone in England will have to spend on social care. There was no explicit pledge to have such a cap in the party's manifesto last week, leading critics to label it a dementia tax. Labour accused the Conservatives of being mired in chaos and confusion over the policy, while the Liberal Democrats called it a manifesto meltdown. Here's our political editor, Laura Koonsberg. Serenely rolling along, it had seemed, with only a few noises off. But an anti-hunting protest was the last of the Tories' problems this today. Is the, state we're in. the manifesto created a mess over social care that had to be cleared up. The original version of the Tory plans were to be bundled away. It might not sound like it, but this is a big change to what Theresa May had planned. 
introducing a limit, a cap, on how much people in England could have to pay. This manifesto says that we will come forward with a consultation paper, a government green paper. And that consultation will include an absolute limit on the amount people have to pay for their care costs. You have just announced a significant change to what was offered in your manifesto, saying there will now be the possibility of a cap on social care that was not in the plans that was announced just four days ago. That doesn't look so strong and stable, Prime Minister, does it? It looks rather like panic in the face of opposition. Our social care system will collapse unless we address this problem. And we can't leave it to the future. We have to start dealing with it now. That's why I want to fix it, and I'm going to fix it. And she was, though, pressed again and again, seeming exasperated by the end. Let's be clear. We have not changed the principles that we set out in the manifesto. We're very clear about the principles on which this system will uh, operate. She wasn't hanging around. Hang on, hang on, I've got to do something here. I've got to do something here. And ministers, well, they didn't really want to talk about it either. Secretary of State, can we just ask you very quickly about the U-turn on social care? No. Secretary of State, can we just ask you very quickly about the U-turn on social care? When did Theresa May change her mind? A closed door. Because just yesterday, ministers were saying nothing was going to change. Is there any chance at all you're going to look at it again? No. But there were concerns inside the party. The Prime Minister herself had heard nerves on the doorstep. The principle of who pays stays the same. But the change of hearts a gift and a source of gags for Labour. She's done another U-turn, Jeremy. Apparently, yes, apparently. Oh, blimey, you can't trust this woman. She does U-turns on emigration. She does U-turn on Parliament won't be meeting, having an election till 2020. And it's you what's can't called strong trust her. And it's what's called strong and stable. Strong and stable. <laughs> but the opposition's still attacking the part of the plan that remains. The value of people's homes in England will be factored in for all kinds of social care, even though assets below £100,000 will be protected. This is what happens when you have a government that thinks it's going to win with an enormous majority. Governments that have landslide majorities make bad decisions, big mistakes and take people for granted. Social care has devolved, decided separately in Wales, Northern Ireland and in Scotland, where her plans for the future will be published in the manifesto tomorrow. Theresa May, though, has been trying to make inroads in areas that have been hostile to Tories for years. She's a liar and a coward. And don't forget, she's been trying to make this campaign all a question of leadership. Are you embarrassed by this U-turn, Prime Minister? Prime Minister is adamant she hasn't budged on her principles, but she has made a big change to her plans published just a few days ago for the first time in this general election campaign. Theresa May looks rattled. The Tories say they're the only ones who are willing to be honest about the cost of social care. Why was there no mention of a cap in the manifesto? But if honesty is the best policy, seemingly that involves being ready at short notice to take their own plans apart. Laura Kunzberg, BBC News, Wrexham. The cost of paying for social care is one of the greatest financial and emotional challenges any family faces. And it is a problem that's likely to become more common as increasing numbers of people live into old age. Our social affairs correspondent, Alison Holt, takes a look at one family's reaction to the new Conservative plans. Pensioner Peter Martin is full-time carer for his 88-year-old mother, Doris. Limited savings mean they qualify for council help, getting three visits a day. Make some more tea? I'll have a lovely tea. Yeah, OK, I'll make another cup of tea then. Peter has spent the last few days trying to work out what the Conservative care plans would mean for them. He believes they'd lose local authority help because the value of their home would be included in calculations for the first time. At the moment, we're paying... £68 pounds a month, and um, if the new system came into effect tomorrow, we'd be paying £950 pounds a month. Would you like some? He also wants more details before being reassured by a cap on care costs. Out of the new system, I see only uncertainty. I've, I see the, the money disappearing very quickly, uh, the debt rising very quickly, and... Um, 
just a, a complete lack of certainty for the future. So what would the Tory plans mean for people who need care? At the moment in England, anyone who has assets or savings of more than about £23,000 pays for their care. Last week in their manifesto, the Conservatives said they'd increase that, allowing people to keep £100,000. The value of their home would be included in the calculations for both residential and home care. Deferred payments would allow the costs to be recouped from someone's estate after death. But it was what was missing that has caused the controversy. No mention of a cap or limit to the massive costs some would still face before they got council help. It had been a 2015 election promise. Now Theresa May says they will consult on what she calls an absolute limit, but doesn't say what that will be. Sir Andrew Dilnot wrote the report that said a cap on care costs was essential to help people plan ahead. Worried by last week's proposals, he welcomes this change. The proposals as they were described last week fail to answer one of the two big questions about social care. How is everybody going to manage the risks that they face? So people with last week's proposals were left with an enormous fear about the future. Putting a cap in place means that people will be able to manage it and that means this set of proposals is much better. Many questions remain about the costs and details of the plans, but for people like Peter and Doris, getting this right couldn't be more important. Alison Holt, BBC News. Well, let's uh, speak to Laura now, who's in Wrexham, where Theresa May has been uh, speaking this uh, today. Uh, Laura, just how damaging is this uh, for Theresa May? Well, George, this peaceful evening in Wrexham in Wales is a real contrast to a very bumpy day for the Prime Minister and the Tories. I think this has certainly been one of her, if not the most difficult day that she's had in this campaign, choosing to clarify one of the main ideas from her manifesto. Because in political speak, clarifying, well, that means changing your plans. And she did that without being to tell us, being able to tell us at what point this cap on social care costs might be introduced. Would it be £100,000? Would it be £10,000? I asked her that this morning. I wasn't the only one and she was not able to give us a clear answer. And in the last couple of hours, the BBC's Andrew Neil has had another go and not getting very far with able to get an answer. What we're going to do, as we said in our manifesto, is publish, um, we refer to a green paper, of course, uh, a green paper, many people may not uh, realise a green paper a is consultation. a consultation. So we want to take people's views, the views of charities, the views of others, on how the system should be operating. What I've said today so is we that we will, have, the size of the we will have within that consultation uh, mm. that concept of uh, an absolute so, limit uh, on the costs that people have to pay. Think. Well, ministers I've spoken to today have said, of course, the important thing is to try to get this right before setting out firm plans. So having a consultation is the right choice to make. They've also said it was better to deal with this problem now rather than risk the concerns over this policy overtaking the whole election campaign. But it is worth saying no main party leader has had to make this kind of change to a manifesto plan in living memory. The Tory manifesto was, after all, only published four days ago and particularly when Theresa May has chosen to try to make this election campaign all about leadership all about authority all about her ability to make decisions what's happened today suggests that she is rather more susceptible to pressure than the Tories would have you believe Laura thank you it didn't take long, with poll numbers slipping just four days after their controversial manifesto pledge to make elderly people pay for their social care at home, Theresa May has abandoned the policy, saying the Tories would now consider a cap on costs. Labour said her government was mired in chaos and confusion, while the Liberal Democrats accused the PM of panic. Mrs May herself refused to reveal what the cap would be or how it would be paid for, instead denying any kind of U-turn. It's a kind of electoral generation game, as our political correspondent Michael Crick has been finding out with the Prime Minister in North Wales. Theresa May was greeted in Wrexham this morning by a noisy protester. This is the fascist state that we're living in! And came here amid other noises of a big policy change. And who should have the story first but George Osborne, sacked by Mrs May as Chancellor 
and now editor of the Evening Standard. U-turn coming on social care. There will be a cap, tweeted Mr Osborne. Who knows a thing or two about U-turns? And when the PM announced her new policy, she blamed it with echoes of Donald Trump on someone else. Since my manifesto was published, the proposals have been subject to fake claims made by Jeremy Corbyn. The only things he has left to offer in this campaign are fake claims, fear and scaremongering. So I want to make a further point clear. This manifesto says that we will come forward with a consultation paper, a government green paper. And that consultation will include an absolute limit on the amount people have to pay for their care costs. How odd when only this weekend cabinet ministers were dispatched to TV studios to defend the policy as it was. We have to do something about the huge costs of social care. And I think it's a mark of Theresa May's bravery and candour with the electorate that uh, she is doing this. People hate this policy and it makes them very, very nervous indeed. Is there any chance at all you're going to look at it again? No. And last week, the minister in charge of social care was plain the idea of capping care costs had now been ruled out. And not only are we dropping it, but we are dropping it ahead of a general election and we're being completely explicit in our manifesto that we're dropping it. And we're dropping it because we've looked again at this proposal and we don't think it's fair. Pressed by the press, the PM seemed a little rattled. Nobody is going to have to pay for their care. Nobody is going to have, while they are alive, nobody is going to have to lose their family home. Doesn't this show that you are really weak and wobbly, not strong and stable? Can you give us an idea of what the cap will be? 100,000? 200,000? Half a million? Don't the people of this country have a right to know what the cap will be? We have not changed the principles of the policy that we set out in our manifesto. Those policies, those policies remain exactly the same. There will be aspects of how this operates that we will consult on through the Green Paper. We were honest that we were going to have a Green Paper and that we would be consulting people on how the system operates. What we have done, which other parties have singularly failed to do, is to recognise the challenge that we face, to respect the needs and concerns of the British people and to provide a long-term plan for sustainable social care. Not far away in the village of Harden, a solid memorial to one of Britain's longest serving prime ministers, the Gladstone Library. And the grand old man changed his mind too on issues such as slavery and Ireland. But William Gladstone's occasional U-turns weren't made in the middle of election campaigns and today Sir David Butler who's covered 20 British general elections since 1945 said that he couldn't remember an election U-turn on this scale. Yet the irony today was the opposition parties agreed with Theresa May this cap wasn't a U-turn and nothing had really changed. They haven't said what the cap is they haven't explained to the millions of people who are desperately worried at the moment about what kind of care they're going to get in the future, desperately worried for children as well about how their parents are going to be looked after. This is a government in chaos and confusion. Do you not think if there was a cap that was in any way palatable, she would have mentioned it today? The absolute chaos of Theresa May's statement today is only added to by the cruelty of her thinking that these weasel words will somehow allay the fears of millions of people in this country whose homes are at risk. As Theresa May left, an ITV poll here suggests her party in Wales is now 10% behind Labour. Yet the first election poll in Wales last month had the Tories 10% ahead. Well, our political editor, Gary Gibbon, is in Downing Street now. How bad is this? Well, it's not very good. As Michael was saying, it's pretty much unprecedented. There's a hole where a policy should be, a brand new minted policy. Uh, Theresa May was saying, oh, we were always going to have a consultation, a green paper on this. Uh, but the bit she's changed, that was decreed. That wasn't up for consultation. And it was decreed, very interestingly, uh, by the person who is pretty much responsible for writing this manifesto. 
her Joint Chief of Staff, Nick Timothy. And this whole story plays a bit to the worries you've heard around Whitehall in the first 10 months of Theresa May's premiership, that power is too centralised inside uh, Number 10, on his desk, effectively, and his Joint Chief of Staff's uh, desk. And I think an awful lot of people will be looking at that and wondering whether his share price has gone down a bit, maybe even in the eyes of uh, Theresa May herself. I think there'll be a, a, a lot of people, uh, Tory MPs uh, who are running for re-election, who'll be looking at this and thinking, ah, maybe pressure does still work. They'd seen pressure change Theresa May on some policy issues before the general election, and some of them had wondered, I wonder if she'll come back a different person with a different sort of uh, mandate and, 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 and not listening, not, not diluting policies that the rest of us or some of us don't like. I think they will uh, scent blood here and will think that maybe uh, there's a chance of turning her over on some of the things they might not like. Uh, and then you have the other problem here that Michael was talking about there. Theresa May repeatedly saying nothing has changed when something palpably, clearly, on television, in print, has changed. And you don't, as a political leader, get too many opportunities to uh, snap the elastic or, uh, in that way. And I think Theresa May will be very wary of saying that sort of thing again. So what does she do next? She goes back to the two themes, which if it was up to Sir Linton Crosby, the strategist uh, in, in, in the Tory campaign, uh, she would never have left, uh, which are leadership and Brexit. There's a problem now, of course, with that uh, slogan, strong and stable leadership, because it doesn't look so uh, strong and stable, but it might be too much to pulp uh, all the uh, posters and banners at this stage. But she gets back onto that, and you can see it already in word emerging uh, from uh, Tory HQ, uh, trying to turn the attack back onto Jeremy Corbyn, trying to turn it back onto the whole business of it's him or me. Thanks, Gary. That's Thanks, Chris. Well, with soaring costs and huge pressure on dwindling funds, it's become clear that something needs to be done about social care. The other parties are promising billions of pounds in new spending. But after the Conservatives' great idea backfired within a few days, where does, the, where does this leave their plans for a social care shake-up? Our health and social care correspondent, Victoria MacDonald, reports. The problem with growing older is not being able to see into the future. Will we become frail, develop dementia, have to go into residential care, or be able to stay at home? And it is that uncertainty that has exercised many governments and experts how to pay for it, and who should pay for it, and how much will it cost? What we're proposing on social care is the first ever proper plan to ensure the sustainability of social care. This and it was a plan a that came out of the blue. Us. The announcement the that there would that be no cap on how much people could spend long. on long-term care, which was previous Tory policy. Kind of the idea of that cap had come from Sir Andrew Dilnot, who'd been asked by the coalition government in 2010 to lead a commission into funding long-term care. Under the current system, if you own assets of more than £23,000, you pay all your care bills. So Andrew Dillnot proposed a cap of £35,000 in care costs, with the state covering anything above that. David Cameron said it should be £72,000, though that never came into force. Then last week, Theresa May dropped the cap. Instead, she proposed not a ceiling, but a floor. Every household could keep their last £100,000. Today a cap is back on the table. It is probably fair to say that many were taken by surprise at last week's manifesto launch at the Conservatives' proposals for social care. Not least the civil servants here at the Department of Health and across Whitehall who had been working on the principle that there was going to be a cap of some sort. Now there seem to be two proposals on the table and nobody is sure how they're going to work together. So Andrew, however, is now predictably pleased at this reversal. It had seemed to me that the response to the initial proposals had been such that there was every chance that in the relatively fluid world of modern politics and policy making, change would occur and I think we should welcome that change. The U-turn followed a weekend of accusations that without a ceiling or a cap, this was a dementia tax, affecting those who often have to pay the most for their care, a bill they wouldn't face if they had another disease, like cancer. I think it will mean that the whole system of charging and payments for social care will have to be re-engineered. And much will depend, of course, on the level that the cap 
is set and it's quite possible that with the combination of a £100,000 floor the cap will be significantly higher than was proposed uh, originally. Nothing has changed. Nothing there are no details changed. yet, but we if Return to Power, the Conservatives say they will have a green paper in the autumn, care. which will presumably outline uh, how much it will cost both older people from their own pockets and the state. If we do, the well, since the Prime Minister's announcement, there have been no Conservative spokespeople available to speak to the media. Even Conservative commentators have been vanishingly rare. We were told the Prime Minister's speech and answers this morning were comprehensive and set out the position. But joining me now is the politician Stuart Wood, Lord Wood, who was a senior advisor to Gordon Brown and Ed Miliband. And when you saw Theresa May's performance today, did it bring any memories back? Yeah, I think everyone who works in politics can recognise that sort of performance. Um, she was getting visibly angry. Um, she was getting angry because what's happened is a policy which, to be fair to the Conservatives, they're trying to grapple with a problem that affects us all, which is how to pay for a pr problem, long-term care, which is going to get bigger and bigger. They put out a proposal, unfortunately for them, it unravelled. The U-turn today, unfortunately, doesn't close the issue off because it raises many more questions, in particular what the level of the cap is going to be. So they seem to have got themselves in a position where they've got two planks of their policy, a cap and a sort of asset limit, but there's less clarity than there was six days ago. And that's, I think, the reason that she's frustrated. I mean, the strange thing is that she was being praised as well by some commentators. There were columns yesterday yeah. saying this is an audacious policy and well done for having gripped the, you know, gripped the nettle. And then backing off, I mean, do, do, you, do you think... It was right to back off electorally. I mean, do you think basically this will new to the problem for her? No, I don't, because I think, I think, I mean, a U-turn like the national insurance U-turn, which she performed before the election, I mean, I hate to say it as a Labour politician, but it was well done. It was clean, it was quick. It caused problems in the short term, but it was well done. This one, firstly, it's in a campaign. I think it's unprecedented to have a U-turn of such magnitude in a campaign, as David Butler, the great election studies person, has said. But secondly, to come up with a solution which just raises many, many more questions, I find that a very odd thing to do. And it mirrors the winter fuel payment ID. They, they said in their manifesto they'd means test that too, but they didn't say who's going to be means tested. So everyone now thinks they may be caught in the net of the means test on both sides. But both I mean, fronts. Labour have backed off this twice before, haven't they? Before 2010 and again in 2015, when it was branded the death tax by the Conservatives. There was a pathetic lack of political courage. I do, I do think, I mean, I think you have a point. I do think that there has been a culture in this country for the last five years across parties of not grappling the issue. And anyone who comes up with a proposal like Andy Burnham did immediately gets slammed down by newspaper editors and opposition parties and they, get, they sort of retreat in, into, their, in, into their tunnels, you know. And I think that is a problem. And I think to be, the good thing about all this, although Theresa May tonight won't be thinking there's anything that's good about this, is that there will now be a national debate about a very tough question of the balance between caps and charges and assets that will be liable for all this. But, and that's but a good weirdly, thing. I, mean, um, I mean, Ed Miliband, your former boss and, and colleague has said Theresa May is lying but Jeremy Corbyn has basically agreed with her and said yes I agree nothing has changed well in some senses nothing has changed and that there's a lack of clarity about what who exactly is going to pay what and that she hasn't really dispelled that but I, I mean I think Ed has a point I would say that wouldn't I but he does have a point because so Corbyn's and, wrong and, and, and well, right. Ed, <laughs> Ed is right in this respect that it is at the very least disingenuous of Theresa May to say nothing has changed when Jeremy Hunt and Damien Green the last few days have come out explicitly saying there will not be a cap and Damien's Green's ca case saying nothing will change when there was a no cap in the manifesto so that something disingenuous Genuous is going on in, in the attempt to close it down. She said something which I think looked perilous. But do you think Labour is really true. any better placed at the end of today than it was at the beginning? Well, I think, I mean, as, as an observer, I think Labour has been basically sort of sitting back with popcorn today and watching it happen rather than rather than interfering in it. And that's probably the right thing to do because I'm afraid Theresa May is making a mess of it with every intervention. You you were uh, the, the senior advisor uh, to the last Labour. Um, lot. Uh, you know, what, what happens to advisers like Nick Timothy, who apparently is behind this policy, who make this kind of error? Well, I mean, we had, we had elements of... Uh, we had moments in our campaign last time, 2015, people remember the Ed Stone, which, you know, to put yeah. it hardly... Was that you? No, it wasn't ..didn't you. go well. Yeah. It's a collective thing. <laughs> I, won't, I won't put anyone's name in the frame for it. We all accept responsibility for good and bad things. But when that happens and you know who the people are involved, yeah. you, you know, you've got to turn around He'll and... He'll probably get a peerage. Yeah, thank you very much. Oh, I see, someone else. <laughs> you've, got to, you've got to, you know, wake up the next day and get on with it. And I'm sure that's what they'll do. They're professionals. They'll do that. But they'll try and draw a line. It's going to be quite difficult to do that now, I think. Lord Wood, thank you very much. I've been getting